scene and turn to Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And uh, in this particular passage of Scripture, we see uh, what has often been referred to as uh, God's hero hall of faith. Hebrews chapter number 11. And uh, we'll begin reading this morning in verse number 32. Hebrews 11 and verse 32. And uh, after all the list of these, and we'll talk about some of them this morning from this passage of Scripture to help challenge our own heart, but in Hebrews 11 and verse 32, after all the list is given, uh, it, it, the apostle, uh, the, uh, the author, some believe, I, I believe it's Paul, but uh, uh, some uh, believe here where we see him just saying, you know, uh, the list could go on forever. The list could go on forever. Of all of those that have been uh, heroes in, in the past with regard uh, to the things of God. And so he says in verse 32, What shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak, of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in the fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these, all having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Lord, we pray that you'll help us now to, this morning as we consider uh, the characteristic, uh, characteristics, some of the characteristics of a hero's heart as given to us from the Bible. We pray that you would help us, Lord, to be sensitive to the leadership of, uh, uh, of the Spirit. God, I pray, speak to hearts. Uh, we, are, we are desperately dependent upon you to do so. And we trust that you will. And we pray that each one would find themselves, uh, Lord, before you and a readiness to receive your leadership in their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ronald Reagan once said, A divine plan placed this great continent between the oceans to be found by a people from every corner of the earth who had a special love of faith, freedom, and peace. We realize, of course, that faith and freedom and peace must be fought for and defended. It's not natural in our world, and places many times left under themselves end up under despotic rule uh, and uh, tyrants and all that we, that we hear about across the globe. Uh, and without hesitation, we can say that there is no group on the face of the planet that's uh, fought longer, harder, and with greater cost and sacrifice than... Uh, the military veterans of the United States. Veterans Day, of course, is that time when we uh, set aside just to say thank you, as we've uh, uh, mentioned this morning, uh, for their selflessness, uh, for their valor, for their love of country, uh, for their love of freedom, and indeed their love of, uh, love of peace. Uh, President Bush said in 2003, throughout our history, loyal citizens from every corner of America have assumed the duty of military life. Time after time in conflicts across the globe, they have proven that democracy is mightier than tyranny. In peacetime and in war, the veterans of our nation's military have missed birthdays and Christmases and many other holidays and special occasions with family and friends in order to stand their post and defend our families and our freedom. And for that, uh, how can we not be grateful? Uh, for that sacrifice. From those in the past to those serving today in foreign theaters and posts at home, they have dedicated their lives and the lives of their families to the cause of defending our country. 
And we believe that our country has, and are grateful for the fact that our country has been blessed with military might. Uh, he has uh, blessed us with an effective, dedicated fighting force that has guarded uh, us from some of history's most wicked tyrants and dictators and still stands ready to do so. Uh, it is this heavenly blessing that uh, should cause us to be grateful, not only to our veterans, but more so to the Lord, who has mercifully kept his hand of protection on uh, our nation for so long. It's fitting, of course, to say thank you uh, to those who serve. Uh, and, of course, uh, if we did not uh, have that opportunity to do so, uh, or didn't take that opportunity, we would be remiss uh, because we couldn't be here this morning and worship freely the way that we do without those who make that uh, 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 available to us in defense of freedom. Uh, someone once said, we must not forget the past, we must not forget those who sacrificed, but we must also remember the reason. They died so tyranny would die. And uh, they died to create a better world for those of us who followed them. And their sacrifice uh, has not been in vain. Their sacrifice was not in vain. That puts us in mind, of course, of 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. For those of us who know him, we understand that there are a great number of parallels between uh, military service and service to our country. I, I think if you read uh, closely the verses that we read in our, uh, in our opening text this morning, you can see so many parallels between what uh, our forebears in, uh, in Christianity, God's people prior to us, endured. Uh, and some of the same afflictions our military has endured in different places around the world. So the parallels are there. And, of course, we are, uh, we are told in the Bible to be good soldiers of Jesus Christ. And so for those of us who know the Lord, we understand there are a great number of parallels. Uh, and uh, we are finding uh, in our day, unfortunately, that uh, Christianity is becoming uh, uh, somewhat milk toast in light of the spiritual battles that we face today. Uh, this, it, it seems that we are losing our sense of urgency. And it seems that we're losing our sense of purpose. Uh, and therefore, it's difficult for us to be good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 2, Thou therefore endure hardness, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Uh, I think about those who prepare for military service and in their training, they, you know, they, they carry around rucksacks full of rocks or whatever else they got to throw in there to prepare themselves physically and mentally for endurance. But even with all that the modern soldier carries in the battle, there's still a great deal that they choose not to carry for the sake of it hindering them or distracting them or failing them. And you and I as believers need to ask ourselves, uh, have, we, have we shed the unnecessary so that we can live for the necessary? 2 Timothy 4 and 7, Paul said, Again, I've fought a good fight and finished my course. I've kept the faith. And you and I need to be challenged with that same thing this morning. And so we want to express gratitude and remembrance of those who have given their lives for the sake of others. And uh, it's something that God does in several places in the Bible, not the least of which is this Hebrews chapter number 11. And I said before, God referred, or some have referred to it as God's hero hall of fame. Uh, a hero is one that shows exceptional courage and fortitude and bold enterprise in the face of danger. And one thing's for sure, uh, both nationally and spiritually, we are 
in an ever-intensifying war. There's great spiritual danger all around us. Uh, and uh, what we are looking for is men and women of exceptional courage and fortitude and bold enterprise in the ranks of God's army. If you and I are saved this morning, we ought to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. God's calling us to give ourselves uh, and given us an, uh, to give ourselves for the opportunity to distinguish ourselves not for uh, uh, in valor, not for our own name, but for His. We read of such individuals. We read of such character in Hebrews eleven, and we're challenged by that character. We read of Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham and Moses and. Certainly, they distinguish themselves uh, in time of danger. They had certain things in their heart. Look, you don't live the life that these people lived without uh, uh, a great heart, without great characteristics of heart. And even soldiers who start valiantly and lose heart end up in the end failing on the battlefield. And we need to ask the Lord to help us this morning to be the very best we can be uh, for the honor and glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am glad that Jesus Christ is still on the throne. It doesn't matter when all the lawsuits are over, when the tallies are given, and the, uh, the, the winner of this election is legally uh, named and appropriately named. Jesus Christ will still be in charge. Uh, and uh, I'm glad about that. I'm thankful that we serve a risen Savior. <laughs> uh, I'm thankful that He uh, ever makes intercession for us. And uh, you and I, what we need to do is to be found faithful. From the time that we entered into our relationship with God, we entered it by faith. And every day of our life after we came, uh, came to faith in Jesus Christ, we live it by faith. We trust the Lord. Every one of these people that are mentioned in Hebrews chapter number 11, they faced trouble and problems in their life. Things didn't come out like they thought they would. Matter of fact, I mean, how do you, how do you come uh, uh, there in verse number 37, just uh, looking at it here, catching my eye, how do you come to the place of being sawn asunder and say, I think everything came out like I wanted? I doubt that, don't you? Uh, but what was, the, what was the key aspect? They were faithful. They, were faith. they believed God no matter what. They trusted the Lord no matter what. Uh, and because of that, uh, they were faithful even unto the end. The Bible says these are folks of whom the world was not worthy. They, they, they didn't receive the promise. Providing some better thing for us. What was it? Uh, in their heart that motivated them so well. The Hebrews 11 tells us, uh, first of all, they had a tremendous heart of commitment. I mean, they were committed to things. Look at, look at uh, chapter 11 and verse number 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By faith, verse 2, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Uh, I mean, they chose to believe God. They committed their way to him. And that's where we get in a lot of trouble in our day because a lot of folks are just not willing to choose. Uh, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. <laughs> we just went through a choice in this country. Everybody had a choice. Some chose one way and some chose another. But everybody... Uh, well, I, I, I suppose everybody had to make a decision whether or not they were going to choose. And then when they decided to choose, they chose. <laughs> and that's the way it is with life. You know, the thing is, I'm glad that, that, that when it comes to the matter of Christianity, we're not talking about choosing any man's philosophy. Uh, why, why, why should we be encouraged to commit well, first of all, because we're not asking you to commit to men, we, you, you commit to God. 
The Bible warns us to be careful about committing ourselves to men. But when it comes to God, we are assured in the Word of God and by the history of these very individuals that are listed here that God will never fail. I might fail. I, I can choose God and personally fail. But God will never fail. That's why it's a safe choice. Hey, that's why you ought to go ahead and stop making excuses and dilly-dallying around and repent of your sin and trust Christ as your Savior. Because you'll, hey, your eternal security can only be settled in Jesus Christ. The only hope you have of heaven uh, is Jesus Christ. The arm of flesh will fail you. Every, we've said before so often, every religion on the face of the planet, other than the Bible faith, places, uh, uh, places saving power in the work of flesh, which promises failure. Here's the thing. You'll never be religious enough to get to heaven on your own. You'll never be good enough to get to heaven on your own. But the Bible says that God loves you enough to send his son, for God so loved the world that he gave. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ died for our sin, was buried, and rose again the third day, proving that God had accepted his payment for our sin. And he said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Hey, it's a safe commitment. Because the commitment is under the Lord. And, but uh, God has given us the ability to choose. With regard to salvation, with regard to service. There are a lot of, you know the Bible says in Joshua 24 and 15, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. There is no, I mean, how can you read Hebrews chapter number 11 and not realize uh, that uh, service to the Lord is not always easy? It is difficult. There are gains and sometimes there are personal losses. That's all there is to it. Uh, but in the end, in the end, no individual that is ever committed to God will regret that decision. No one. Because whatever God may do in and through us will be done unto His glory and for the good of others. The most difficult life lived in Christianity is still a success under the Lord. Under his glory. You think about Paul himself, beaten, stoned, left for dead, shipwrecked, <laughs> and, uh, and, and still was joyful to be able to talk about the day that he trusted Christ as personal Savior. He said, I know whom I have believed that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. You know what causes commitment to fail a lot of times? Uh, we end up sacrificing on the altar of immediate, of the immediate, what should be left for the future. Because our rewards aren't immediate, we, we slacken our commitment. Because things aren't coming out like we thought, we, we let up on our commitment. But brethren, uh, the Bible tells us that our citizenship is not here. Our citizenship is in heaven. From whence we look for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we're going to be faithful in the area of commitment, we'll have to keep our eyes on the Lord and live by faith. Every veteran that did anything for our country was committed. Committed. And sometimes uh, you wonder about that commitment. Um, national leaders come and go. They change here, they change there. I was talking with Hudson about this um, because of um, trying to prepare him for the future. And I said, son, God has given us a, a tremendous country here. And we have to remember that we enlist to protect and preserve the Constitution of the United States of America. And sometimes that means going against our friends. 
Sometimes it means standing against even those leaders who don't understand the same truth. It is those principles that God has given that we stand for. Uh, and somebody's got to commit to it. Otherwise, 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 all of that is... <laughs> Uh, I don't uh, want to get into all this too much, but if you, <laughs> if you ever read uh, some of the documents of our founding fathers, you will see men that warned against the powers of government. Do you know why? Because they remembered where they came from. Uh, and uh, and to think about the freedoms that we have because of the commitment of those in this country that have gone before us. Our, many of our founding fathers died impoverished. They gave everything they had for a belief in freedom and liberty because they were committed. And so how can we give anything less, and especially in light of the Lord Jesus Christ who, uh, uh, who committed, him, uh, committed his way and was obedient even unto death, the death of the cross. And so our Savior and these folks listed in Hebrews 11 and those that we are grateful for with regard to the history of our nation had a heart of commitment. The second thing that's had there, of course, is a heart of sacrifice. A heart of sacrifice. Uh, our Savior obviously sacrificed for God so loved the world that he gave. Jesus died on the cross of Calvary to pay for our sin. He, uh, he was obedient unto death. He gave himself in sacrifice. And uh, most of the time, you know, we, when we think about the ultimate sacrifice, that we observe that at Memorial Day, don't we? Those that gave, them, that gave and paid that ultimate price for freedom. But there's not, look, there's nothing... Gained in this world that is worth gaining that doesn't cost something. That's true uh, in any facet of life. But certainly spiritually. Certainly spiritually. And you know, thinking about this matter, uh, I mentioned to the young people this morning in Sunday school that a lot of times, a lot of times, in our, in our heart and life. We rejoice in our Savior's commitment on, and sacrifice on our behalf, but then we demonstrate in some way that we are not nearly as committed as He was. We, because we become so selfish. So long as we're selfish, we, we will not sacrifice. But sacrifice is a part of a hero's heart. It's there. The hours of training and the hours of, uh, of preparation and, uh, and all that's given up in order to do uh, the, the, the duty at hand is part of sacrifice. A hero's heart has sacrifice there. The third thing that you see is connected with both of these, and that is in the heart of a hero is dedication. Dedication. Um, how our hearts are moved when we hear stories of veterans that have been through battle and all that other kind of thing, and it was looking bad and things were turning worse all the time, but they stuck to their post. They were dedicated. Um, in every way, completely sold to the responsibility. Wasn't that our Savior? When Jesus said, I delight to do thy will, O God. Isn't it true in the, garden of, in the garden of Gethsemane when he prayed? If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. By the way, let's make this clear. Jesus never would have gone to the cross of Calvary if he wasn't dedicated. But he was. Dedicated for the sake of us and for the, uh, for the sake of, uh, of, of all mankind. His dedication was clear. 
He, he was going to be faithful to do his duty uh, because uh, of honoring God the Father. He said, I do always those things that please him. Dedication is in the heart of every hero. The fifth thing that is in the heart of every hero is this, that is fear. Somebody said fear makes cowards or heroes. But, but for all of the fear, for all of the fear of what the battle may bring, there's a greater fear in what would be lost if the battle wasn't fought. There's a reverence And for a long time with regard to our nation, we've seen an eroding of reverence for the principles that founded this nation. That's why we're running into problems with commitment, sacrifice, and dedication. I think I mentioned to you before, but in, uh, in, in basic training, I remember partway through uh, the... the uh, the uh, T.I. is saying, uh, I, I bet there's none of you that would die for this country. Now, what was he trying to do? <laughs> well, he's trying to stir us up. And, buddy, I'm telling you, it worked. <laughs> it worked. Um, I'm not a constitutional expert. I'm not a constitutional lawyer. <laughs> uh I'm not an expert in politics. Um, but I do have a family heritage of military service. And one thing I'm glad that my grandfather and my dad instilled in me was a reverence for the principles of the founding principles of the United States of America. Amen. And they only, we, we, we should only reverence them because they're founded in Scripture. That's why our Constitution is worded the way it is. Uh, our National Anthem is worded the way it is. What are they going to do? Well, there already are, I guess, in some cases. What are they going to do? Well, what are some of these people going to do one day? Uh, march up there and open up that glass case and rub out God out of the Constitution? We've lost our... And, 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 and that same principle, the loss of reverence, the loss of a right fear... The loss of reverence for things that matter, for things eternal, is why there is this constant eroding in our society. Why we're losing that willingness in the heart of some to, uh, to um, commit. In verse... Seven of the text Noah is mentioned. He was moved with fear. Fear of what? Well, one fear for God. Matter of fact, you know, we, I don't know that anybody, I don't know that that God whispered in anybody else's ear about a flood coming, and you better build a boat. <laughs> uh, I don't think. Uh, I'm sure people called him. Matter of fact, we know that they we know they thought he was crazy because they didn't get in. You've lost your mind. Moved with fear. And certainly there was a fit. Look, if he didn't build the boat, there was a fear of what came after. And brother, we see then, therefore, the motivation of a hero's heart to fight because of what comes after if we don't. And that's true nationally. That's true spiritually. The eroding of our commitment in churches to founding principles of the Bible is, is, is unbelievable uh, and is very discouraging. 
And on the altar of the convenient, we sacrifice the next generation in so many ways, unless we're moved with fear. Seems hard to believe, doesn't it, that fear is found in the heart of a hero, but it always is. <laughs> My dad had a field promotion in Vietnam. And uh, on, the, on the few, one of the few occasions when dad would talk about it, uh, he talked about being field promoted there. And, and he said, uh, you know, they, they, they promoted me because, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I led the way in, uh, in, in leading some of our, our men into a foxhole and it saved their life. But this is what he said, I was afraid I was going to die. And I jumped in the foxhole and some fellows went with me. But fear is in the heart of it. A proper fear is in the heart of every hero. Another characteristic of a hero's heart is that of obedience. Um, in, in verse number 8, the Bible says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should, after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. You know our society doesn't like that word obey. Children aren't taught that anymore, it don't seem like, in a lot of ways. Obey. And uh, there, <laughs> there is this uh, attitude of rebellion. And it'd be one thing if it was rebellion against some terrible, awful, awful practice or principle. But a lot of times it just boils down to the fact that I am not going to have anybody tell me what to do. It's like the fellow I heard about years ago giving testimony in church. He said uh, as a young boy and a teenager, he got, he got tired of his, uh, of his parents always telling him what to do, so he joined the Marine Corps. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Obedience. Obedience to the Lord. Obedience to orders. Abraham obeyed. And the fact of the matter is, Abraham didn't even know where he was going. He just, said, he just knew that God said, I need you to go this way. Go to a land that I will show thee. You know what our problem is a lot of times with regard to our obedience? We're only willing to commit to obedience if we can see the end game. Brother, you can't always see the end game if you live by faith. You can't. Sometimes it's just a matter of obeying God and trusting Him. Step. You can count on one thing. You don't need to see the end game when you're obeying the one that has an all-seeing eye. You trust Him. Abraham did. And there's obedience. There's obedience in the heart of a hero, which is connected to uh, uh, this further characteristic, that of submission. And I bring this up with regard to Sarah there in verse 11 and 12. Uh, Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful uh, who had promised, therefore sprang there even of one, and of him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable." Uh, and that sounds great. The thing we often miss about Sarah is the Bible also uh, says of her that she called Abraham Lord. Here's my point. She knew her place in life and she fulfilled it. And that required submission of her. According to 1 Peter 3, verse 5 and 6. Submission to her husband's leadership, submission to her role as a wife and mother. And uh, she had a proper respect for God's authority, and she received the reward of that respect. We get the idea, we get the idea that the only one that's going to ever receive commendation is the one right out front, right at the top. But there could be nothing further from the truth. That's proven in, in, in the life of Sarah. As she's mentioned, she, she is mentioned in God's hero, Hall of Faith. 
she received the recompense of her reward because she submitted to her role. You know, sometimes I wonder, do we even know what our role is? Where do we get our role? We get it from the Bible. Our job description is there as believers. Are we willing to submit to it? Submission. But then also, in the heart of every hero, is the characteristic of hope. Hope. Why do people fight if there's no hope? Nobody in their right mind fights if there's no hope. You know? There's hope. Oh, maybe not hope for my present condition, but certainly hope for what may come. If I do stand fast, if I am faithful, and we see that uh, with uh, Isaac, Jacob, uh, and Joseph there in verse 22 of chapter number 11, where the Bible says, By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel. He died, of course, in Egypt. And gave commandment concerning his bones. Now, Joseph wasn't coming out of there. But he knew those that came after him would. It was hope. And he said, look, make sure, make sure when you go, don't leave me down here. And pack me up bones and take me over with you. He had hope. Hope. What keeps a soldier fighting? Hope. Hope not only of survival. Hope not only of success immediately, but hope for the future. There is hope. And a hero's heart knows about it. Is motivated by it. There's hope. Even if my current situation looks hopeless, there is hope for the future. A brighter day if I, if I remain faithful to the duty at hand. Hope. And all of that is culminated in this final characteristic that at least that I put down for uh, a hero's heart. And that is self-denial. Self-denial. And isn't that what it all comes down to? Whether or not we are willing to fight and to live for something better than ourselves, Bigger than ourselves. The Bible says of Moses in verse 24, By faith Moses, when he was come to years... <laughs> refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Moses was in a position where he could have had anything in life he wanted. Raised under Pharaoh. The, the best... Education possible, which is really strange. They taught some strange stuff. Like the earth on the back of elephants and all that other kind. Aren't you glad education's come a ways? Amen. <laughs> but he could have had the best. Money. Houses. Lands. But... He chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. Look what this says. Than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Here's the thing. It's always sinful to choose self over others. Moses could have done it. But he had that characteristic that's always in a hero's heart of self-denial. One of the great challenges of our Christian life, ultimately, when all is said and done, when every principle is understood, if every principle and every verse in the Bible regarding those principles of life could be memorized, still, the hardest thing that we will ever face is learning to die to self. But that is the linchpin to everything else. The key to open the door to everything else. That is, that once self is out of the way, the Bible says this way, no man can serve two masters. 
You have to decide. To live for self or die to self. I'm reminded again of what Ronald Reagan once said. Some people live an entire lifetime and wonder if they've ever made a difference in the world. Yeah, but the Marines don't have that problem. If that can be said of the veterans of this great country who served for freedom and against tyranny, how much more could and should it be said of those who serve the cause of a heavenly country? against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in high places and for the cause of the great shepherd and bishop of our souls, the Lord Jesus Christ. God says, I sought for a man who was standing in the gap. I wonder how many of God's people would ask the Lord this morning, Lord, not for my sake, not for my glory, but for the honor of the Lord Jesus Christ, would you help me to have a hero's heart? Help me, Lord, to have a hero's heart. Let's stand together and bow our heads for prayer.